Hey, this is Dorian Day, and welcome to Serum in Depth number five. Today, we're going to go over Serum's uh, modulation matrix and its hidden modulators. Um, so this page right here, matrix, is the where you control all the modulations that you have assigned in Serum. So how this works is if you start out on this page, and let's say you assign an LFO to filter cutoff come back into matrix and it's assigned right here you can see the source is LFO and the destination is filter cutoff okay so maybe macro would have been a better assignment because it's easier to visualize so if I had macro one you can see there are macros added So right here on this page, you can visualize this little blue light moving as I turn the macro knob. And what you see is it only goes 50% of the way on either direction. And this is because it's currently set into bi-directional mode. So if I switch to unidirectional mode, you'll see it goes the full length, but stops in the middle. And if I go backwards, so you can reverse the relationship, it goes backwards. You can also see on the front screen right here. You can see the little blue dot moving right there. All right, well, what else on this screen? Well, you can also... Um, multiply the signal by an auxiliary source. So you can influence the amount of this source by a second source. So if we do mod wheel, for example, currently my mod wheel is all the way down. As I turn the macro knob, nothing happens. But if I increase my mod wheel with the macro knob up, you can see what happens. And you can inverse the relationship pushing the knob in the opposite direction and bypass all the other. Finally, you have this output slider. And this basically influences how much all of the stuff behind it is working. Okay. So that's pretty much how the matrix works. Um, the only other thing to talk about is um, Serum's hidden modulators. So they're modulators that you can only access by using the matrix. Now, I think the fastest way to do this is to assign a, um, a front screen modulator to some parameter, like let's say detune, and then go into the matrix and you'll have it assigned right here, and then you can just change to aftertouch. Otherwise, you have to go through the screen, which isn't incredibly difficult, but there's still quite a number of things going on. So I'll show you, let's do, put this on to pitch, course pitch. So as I push on my uh, MIDI keyboard that has aftertouch, the harder I push, the more it's affecting the pitch. And that's how aftertouch works. It allows you to control a parameter um, using uh, the pressure of your MIDI keyboard while you're holding down a note. Next, we have chaos. Chaos mode connects to this control right here in the global section. And then we talked about it, chaos BPM sync. We see right here chaos chaos one and two are different types of chaos lfos um to hear one or both you have to make the assignments in the mod matrix and there's a description of them chaos one has a more periodic uh repeating and more bipolar tendency and chaos two is cha chaotically restarting sort of sound to it um 
they're used for subtlety and like it says here to simulate the drift of analog oscillators or to create any kind of crazy random things. I suppose this is similar to a sample and hold and other synthesizers, but a little more complicated and organic sounding. So this is basically going to add randomness to what you're doing. You can see that blue knob moving. I'm holding the keys down and it's just moving around randomly. If I shift this around, it can happen even more. Not at all. BPM sync syncs it to your BPM. Mono. Um, so when it's in mono mode, every voice has the same chaos. Otherwise, I guess it's slightly different. Yep, that's what it says. So you have two of them. Like I said, it's described in the manuals. Like I just read what it, they each do. Noise of SC takes it from the noise. Note on is a random number. Okay, yeah, so we see here note on random one and two, two separate random numbers generated on note on in case you have a need for two different random values on each note. It just jumps around. And this is just a different one. So if I put it here too, you can see they're jumping around differently. Whereas if I put them on the same, now they're jumping around together you have to have the same uh, all the same settings here I had to fix the mod wheel and the type but now they're moving together and if I go back to one separately macros just attached to these knobs here pitch bend your pitch wheel and finally fixed just gives you a fixed positive number it's just always at the tip of that slider that it moves around Um, I think the only other things maybe to talk about are just how to get rid of modulators or modulation choices. So other than to erase things out of here, just sort of tedious, you can go to a knob that's modulated. You can re remove all modulators or you can click on the modulator that is modulating that source and remove it there or bypass it. Um, in the menu, you can initialize all modulations without uh, changing a lot of your other settings. And pretty much does it. All right, thanks for watching.